Stalker 2 update has just dropped on PC and Xbox and I wanted to quickly go over some of the important changes made in the update. Let's take a look at the patch notes. First, they've made several improvements to AI, including fixing issues where groups of NPCs would get stuck and die near shelters during active emissions. They've also resolved problems such as burrow dropping mission items from the player's hand, NPCs occasionally getting stuck and unable to reach mission locations, and performance drops during long play sessions in crowded areas. Additionally, they've fixed NPCs sometimes moving into an A pose or flying after death, and their ability to track whether a target in cover is protected from gunfire has been improved. These fixes are just part of more than 20 different AI related issues addressed in the patch. Next, for optimization, they have done several visual and performance related issue fixes, notably where they've resolved the problem where invisible NPCs or mutants would appear in the player's field of view while scoping. They've also fixed fire visual effects that were not rendering properly from certain camera angles. They've also fixed 100 additional crashes on top of this. For audio and sound fixes, they've fixed a number of audio issues, including one of the where the combat music would continue playing after combat had ended, plus a bunch of other ones. What about some balance changes? And there are a couple of big ones in here, including reduced repair costs for weapons and armors, an increase in the selling price of artifacts, money rewards for most missions has been increased up to three times, which is super cool, and armor and weapon buffs for rookie difficulty have been added. Mutant damage has been decreased on rookie difficulty, and they've reduced the damage to the player's weapon by 23% in the mode. Additionally, the durability of armor has been increased by 12%, and they've added a silencer attachment for the PTM to a specific stash in the lesser zone. Various other balance changes have been made to consumables, including rebalancing the Hercules consumable, remove the player from speed buff, while increasing the weight carry capacity. For combat balancing, they've made several adjustments as well, including changes to mutant health and damage. The weight of certain mission items like scanners has been reduced, and bloodsucker damage and HP regeneration has been adjusted. Additionally, they've made several changes to enemy health values, including reducing the HP of controllers, burrows, bores, and fleshes, Damage mechanics for certain enemies like boars and fleshes have been tweaked, with headshots now dealing 100% of body damage. Weapon melee distance, including for knives, have been increased as well. A big one for console players, they've increased the gamepad dead zone on the controller. For character fixes, the patch includes some minor fixes to NPC models and animations, as well as corrections to eyes and teeth and NPC models. For cutscenes, they've added missing footage to TV displays in the final cutscene and fixed issues with deer animations in the opening scene. There's also 20 other bug fixes related to cutscenes. In game settings and menus, they've adjusted text issues on the shader compilation screen for better readability and fixed an issue where the NVIDIA reflex low latency setting wasn't saved after restarting the game. Additionally, 10 other minor issues have been resolved. For interactable objects, several issues with destructible and movable objects, including those floating in the air, have been resolved. Interaction prompts for glass doors in Circa's inner yard, which were causing walkthrough blockers, have been fixed. They've also corrected missing inner doors in the X11 laboratory elevator, along with other minor object related issues. For main and side missions, numerous mission blockers have been resolved across both main and side missions. For example, they've fixed interactions with the dead blind dogs in the Nightingale's hunt mission, uncompletable objects in Seek and You Shall Find, and progression blockers in several other missions. Many other issues with objects and NPC progressions have been fixed, including Just Like the Good Old Days, which is the most important one, and A Needle in the Haystack, and To the Last Drop of Blood. In total, 120 mission-related issues have been addressed. Open world experience, various open world fixes have been made, including a resolve issue for humanoid corpses having stretched or missing limbs, missing fast travel routes, and problems with hostile NPC behavior. Additionally, they've improved NPC behavior during encounters and corrected progression issues in missions like Black Sheep and The Key to Freedom. For player guidance, gear and weapons, several minor bugs have been fixed, such as the bug that allowed players to sell items for more money than they were worth, They've also resolved input blocking issues with the PDA, inventory and attachments, and fixed grenade selection and compass markers overlap problems. Additionally, they've improved HUD behavior and fixed issues with the flashlight after saving and loading. To voiceover and facial animations, they've restored missing facial animations for characters like Sava in the Hot on the Trail mission and Mugwort in the Internal Shining, and fixed missing voice lines during the Let No One Leave Unsatisfied mission. They've also corrected radio call effects to ensure NPC voices properly reflect the distance during communication. Lastly, for world fixes, a variety of world-related bugs have been fixed, including flickering textures in locations like the Sphere, military base, and chemical plant, 
as well as movement issues in missions like Once More Upon the Breach and A Tough Awakening. They've also fixed NPC behaviour during encounters, adjusted artificial spawn points and balanced voice volume during storm weather. Additionally, around 50 additional world related bugs have been addressed. So guys, that is the first update for Stalker 2. I just wanted to go over the patch notes in case anyone was wondering exactly what had been changed in the update. Let me know what you think of the update in the comments. Of course, there are still things that need to be fixed and added into the game, like the A-Life system, but this should be a much improved version of Stalker 2 after the update. Like and subscribe for more, and I will see you next time.